Wonderful. Once this wild cape parrot is back to full health, she'll be released. She's been suffering from cytokine beak and feather disease. Conservation biologist Steve Boys runs a project to save the cape parrot from extinction and rebuild its populations. There are only a thousand left in the wild. Beak and feather disease is highly contagious and represents a mortal danger to the species. When this bird was first brought in, she was in a very bad way. She was very thin. She was in an awful condition. I'm surprised that she, that, that she survived and that she's progressed as well as she has. It's, to me, it's absolute revelation. This robust, strong -looking bird the virus there. makes the feathers fall off and the beak develop lesions. This patient could no longer fly and was stuck on the branch of a tree when Boyd's and his team came to the rescue. She remained in poor health for a year and a half. Then Boyd started to feed her and some other sick birds the species' favourite traditional food, the fruit of the yellowwood tree. As soon as we started feeding them yellowwood fruits after trying everything, uh, we started to see the virus go down in their blood so far that we couldn't even find it until we used a new technique and found it at very low levels. So this is the medicine for cat parrots that is missing from their diet. So it's not just wonderful nutrition, it is a medicine for them. Researchers here in Cape Town are also considering what effects climate change is having or could have on bird populations. How will vegetation and animal populations react if temperatures rise and rainfall drops? Germany's development agency, GIZ, is supporting the research. You would need, I would say, at least another two degrees of temperature change and in the region of a 5 to 10 percent reduction in rainfall. You know, if, if you're looking at that kind of a scenario, that I would think is, is going to start having an adverse effect on, on, on Afromontane forests. Continuous forests used to stretch across the Cape region, rich in indigenous species such as the yellowwood. Now there are just a few separate patches of forest left. On large plantations, foreign species prevail. If their forest habitats are further reduced, the Cape parrots might be wiped out. Their food of choice is already hard to find, because countless yellowwood trees, once very abundant, have been felled. This fine specimen is 1,000 years old. The forests were full of mature yellow woods until the commercial loggers came. Yellow wood trees are now rare and their fruits as well. For centuries now, their timber has been much in demand. Yellow woods were part of the Industrial Revolution in South Africa. Millions of these trees were removed for railway sleepers and mining timber to send it underground. But today, yellowwood, because of its beautiful colour, is one of the most valuable timbers on earth. Now, in some places, this will sell for as much as 3,000 euros per cubic metre. A mature tree fetches 25 to 30,000 euros. Although the government has set limits on the number of trees that may be felled, illegal logging continues. As you can see with uh, the sawdust still here, uh, this is very recently logged, the leaves are still alive, everything in the upper canopy is still alive, so this was in the last week. We have now lost another 200 year old, 250 year old yellowwood tree, uh, one of very few remaining. But this carries on each year, one tree after another, until we one day have no old yellowwoods remaining. Though yellowwood fruit may be the perfect food and contain an antiviral agent, it's now scarce and the birds have turned to acorns and pecans. But they contain toxins and too much fat and sugar. A century ago, yellowwood fruits were available throughout the year. Now, between January and March, the parrots have nothing to eat. Weakened birds are more susceptible to disease. The situation may not be entirely bleak, though. Boys couldn't spot any chicks for five years. It's only healthy cape parrots that reproduce, and these two look like they might be about to do just that. Cape parrots need cavities to breed in, but suitable natural cavities are in short supply now. 
Also, the Cape Parrot Project has put up hundreds of nesting boxes. Steve Boyce checks to see if they're in good condition and can keep out the rain. The project is also planning to reforest large stretches of land with yellowwood trees. Then the parrot will once again have their perfect food, the year round. The Cape Parrot Project pays villagers to tend seedlings of yellowwood and other indigenous species, about one euro per tree, and more money to look after them later. This is one of the poorest regions in South Africa. The project offers a welcome source of additional income. This project is very good for us as a community because when we get money out of this project, we buy things like chairs and tiles to make the community all beautiful. In this one valley, 10,000 trees have already been planted. There should be a million more to come. Our education with the local people would have them taking care of those trees for the next 25 years, for the next 100 years, as these forests grow up and big again. And that's, that's what we're looking to do, is keep this growing, establish ourselves 100 miles to the north, all the way down this mountain range, so that we do this with all the communities, maybe 50 communities by the end. So this is a big idea, all for one parrot. We need to restore everything we've done, especially to the forests of the world, the lungs of our planet.